Good morning. Let's begin our service by singing hymn number 382. What is thy birthright, man, child of the perfect one? What is thy father's plan for his beloved son? Hymn number 382. The scriptural will be given by Wendy from Georgia. Good morning. I will read from Romans. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned, after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one the free gift came upon all men unto the justification of life.
Let us have a moment of silent prayer and then follow by repeating the Lord's Prayer and its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science textbook. Our Father, who is art in heaven. Our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable One. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Let's now sing hymn number 327. The God who made both heaven and earth and all that they contain will never quit his steadfast truth, nor make his promise vain. Hymn 327.
Welcome to the Sunday morning service at the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. We begin each Sunday morning here at 10 a.m. with our roundtable discussion. And if you missed this morning's, you really have to check it out on the website, plainfieldcs.com. Also on Sundays at 11, we have a Sunday school for children which is conducted by a teleconference number so that any child anywhere in the world with a telephone can attend. On Wednesday evenings, we have a testimony meeting at 8.15 where you can hear testimonies of healings and lives changed through the study and practice of Christian science. And at all of our services, we have a nursery for infants and toddlers. You can find us not only here in Plainfield, New Jersey, but also on our website, plainfieldcs.com. We have a channel on YouTube where you can find us. And we also have offerings on SoundCloud, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And you can listen to all of our services either on our website or channel on YouTube or from your telephone via a teleconference number that we provide for that purpose. And next Saturday at 10 a.m., we're going to have another Bible study session. So check the website for Bible study questions. And please join us next Saturday at 10 a.m. And one of the articles featured on our website is entitled, Evil Hath No Origin, by Reverend G.A. Kratzer. So if you've ever wondered where evil comes from, or where disease comes from, read this article. It's very short, but very clear. Everyone is welcome here. And that includes all of you who are listening and participating from around the world. And now we will have a reading of a testimony from the chapter entitled Fruitage in Science and Health, which attests to the healing power obtained by studying the Christian Science textbook. And that reading will be given this morning by Pilar from New York. From page 657, Severe Eye Trouble Overcome. After hearing Christian science lightly spoken of from a Christian pulpit, I decided to go to one of the services and hear for myself. From infancy, I had been devoted to my church, and as soon as I was old enough, I was ever active in the work. Feeling it to be my duty, to attend every service held in my own church, I took advantage of the Wednesday evening meetings. My first visit was not my last, I am thankful to say, for I saw immediately that these people were not only preach Christianity, but practice it and live it. At that time, I was wearing glasses and had worn them for 16 years. At times, I suffered the most intense Pain, and for this phase of the trouble, one specialist after another had been consulted. All gave me very much the same advice. Each one urged extreme carefulness and gave me glasses that seemed to relieve for a time. None of them held out any hope that my sight would be, ever be restored, saying that the defect had existed since infancy and that in time, I should be blind. The thought of blindness was very distressing to me, but I tried to bear it with Christian resignation, since I thought that God had seen fit, fit to afflict me. But since I have learned that He is a loving Father who gives only God, I regret that I ever charged Him with my affliction. I had no treatment, but I read Science and Health and my eyes were healed and glasses laid aside. I can never find words to express my thanks to our dear leader 
through whose teachings my sight had been regained. I can truthfully say that where I was blind, now I see. Through an understanding of truth, I have found my sight perfect as God gave it. Ms. D.S. Wimbledon, North Carolina. The lesson sermon for this morning can be found on page 12 of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, Adam and Fallen Man. The golden text is from 2 Corinthians. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. The responsive reading is from Ephesians. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who, being past feeling, have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But that ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put it off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Lil from New Jersey will read from the Bible. Job, the Spirit of God hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. Deuteronomy, these are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel in the land of Moab, besides the covenant which he made with them in Horeb. See, I have set before thee this day life and good, and death and evil, and that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments, and his statutes, and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shall be drawn away, and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whither thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record these days against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, 
and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him. For he is thy life, <clears throat> and the length of thy days, <clears throat> that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to give them. Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat, freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Proverbs. In the way of righteousness is life, and in the pathway thereof there is no death. John. There was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie, and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man, when the water is troubled, to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. But Jesus answered them, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. Verily, verily, I say unto you, 
He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. Second Corinthians. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. First Corinthians. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Fairly from Maryland will now read. Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. God creates all through mind, not through matter. God fashions all things after his own likeness. Life is reflected in existence, truth in truthfulness, God in goodness, which impart their own peace and permanence. Love redolent with unselfishness, bathes all in beauty and light. The grass beneath our feet silently exclaims, the meek shall inherit the earth. Man, made in his likeness, possesses and reflects God's dominion over all the earth. Man and woman, as coexistent and eternal with God, forever reflect in glorified quality the infinite Father, Mother, God. Let there be light is the perpetual demand of truth and love, changing chaos into order and discord into the music of the spheres. The mythical human series of creation, anciently classified as the higher criticism, sprang from cultured scholars in Rome and in Greece, but they afforded no foundation for accurate views of creation by the divine mind. Mortal man has made a covenant with his eyes to belittle deity with human conceptions. In league with material sense, mortals take limited views of all things. The true idea of man as the reflection of the invisible God is as incomprehensible to the limited senses as is man's infinite principle. The visible universe and material man 
are the poor counterfeits of the invisible universe and spiritual man. The forbidden fruit of knowledge against which wisdom warns man is the testimony of error, declaring existence to be at the mercy of death and good and evil to be capable of commingling. This is the significance of the scripture concerning this tree of the knowledge of good and evil. This growth of material belief, of which it is said, in the day that thou eatest thou of, thou shalt surely die. Human hypotheses first assume the reality of sickness, sin, and death, and then assume the necessity of these evils, because of their admitted actuality. These human verdicts are the procurers of all discord. The press unwittingly sends forth many sorrows and diseases among the human family. It does this by giving names to diseases and by printing long descriptions which mirror images of disease distinctly in thought. A new name for an ailment affects people like a Parisian name for a novel garment. Everyone hastens to get it. A minutely described disease costs many a man his earthly days of comfort. What a price for human knowledge. But the price does not exceed the original cost. God said of the tree of knowledge, which bears the fruit of sin, disease, and death, in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Ought we not then to judge the knowledge thus obtained to be untrue and dangerous, since the tree is known by his fruit? Adam, error, a falsity, an inverted image of spirit, the image and likeness of what God has not created namely matter, sin, sickness, and death. The name Adam represents the false supposition that life is not eternal, but has beginning and end. The ideal man was revealed in due time and was known as Christ Jesus. When speaking of God's children, not the children of men, Jesus said, the kingdom of God is within you. That is, truth and love reign in the real man, showing that man in God's image is unfallen and eternal. Through spiritual sense, you can discern the heart of divinity and thus begin to comprehend in science the generic term Man. Man is not absorbed in deity, and man cannot lose his individuality, for he reflects eternal life. Nor is he an isolated, solitary idea, for he represents infinite mind, the sum of all substance. In divine science, man is the true image of God. The divine nature was best expressed in Christ Jesus, who threw upon mortals the truer reflection of God and lifted their lives higher than their poor thought models would allow, thoughts which presented man as fallen, sick, sinning, and dying. The Christ-like understanding of scientific being and divine healing includes a perfect principle and idea, perfect God and perfect man as the basis of thought and demonstration. If man was once perfect but has now lost his perfection, then mortals have never beheld in man the reflex image of God. The lost image is no image. The true likeness cannot be lost in divine reflection. Understanding this, Jesus said, 
Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. When mortal man blends his thoughts of existence with the spiritual and works only as God works, he will no longer grope in the dark and cling to earth because he has not tasted heaven. Carnal beliefs defraud us. They make man an involuntary hypocrite, producing evil when he would create good, forming deformity when he would outline grace and beauty injuring those whom he would bless. He becomes a general miscreator who believes he is a semi-god. The conceptions of mortal, erring thought must give way to the ideal of all that is perfect and eternal. Through many generations, human beliefs will be attaining diviner conceptions and the immortal and perfect model of God's creation will finally be seen as the only true conception of being. Through discernment of the spiritual opposite of materiality, even the way through Christ's truth, man will reopen with the key of divine science, the gates of paradise, which human beliefs have closed and will find himself unfallen, upright, pure, and free. Let us now have a moment of silent prayer for our world. Let's now sing hymn number 31. The words of this hymn are by Mary Baker Eddy. Brood o'er us with thy sheltering wing, neath which our spirits blend like brother birds that soar and sing and on the same branch bend. The arrow that doth wound the dove darts not from those who watch and love. Hymn number 31.
earth sent water out of the desert land of Edom without rain or wind or cloud in the same way he can deliver you to freedom though you cannot seem to see hard thing to be healed then stop thinking that if you would be restored it is but a light thing to the Lord it is but a light thing to the Lord Was a feeding of five thousand with some bread, a couple fish. Can you see that? You will be fed and clothed and housed and live a life far better than you could wish. You have only find the way. Lift your thought up, waiting there is your reward. It is but a light thing to the Lord. It is but a light thing to the Lord. If you think that you're going to God, but you don't really believe that He will do anything. Then you're not really going to God. You're just imagining a vain thing, a waste of time. God provided. And chariots of fire to destroy the enemy. If you low down, it is the evil one's desire that you do not claim the right to be free. They with you are much more. And they with them. The Almighty is your shield and your sword. It is but a light thing to the Lord. It is but a light thing to the Lord. Trust your children. Let's now sing hymn number seven. Abide with me, fast breaks the morning light. Our day star rises, banishing all night. Thou art our strength, O truth that maketh free. We would unfailingly abide in thee. Hymn number seven.
I will read from the Christian Science textbook, The Scientific Statement of Being, and the correlative passages from 1 John, 3rd chapter. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation. For God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material, he is spiritual. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Amen. Mm -hmm. 